everyone welcome back to another video I am back today with this gorgeous piece of artwork by Grazia Salvo this is from her wild soul book it's very quickly become one of my absolute favorite coloring books I did do two previous tutorials for this coloring page I have a background tutorial using stencils and pan pastels and I also have a tutorial where I showed you how to lay all of the colors down and create this beautiful fur effect on the leopard in this video we're going to be doing a side profile skin coloring tutorial. I had actually never colored a side facing profile until very recently <laughs> and it's really all about where you want to lay your highlights, where to lay the shadows, but it is a little bit different than coloring a portrait that is actually facing you because of course the lighting is going to be hit hitting different parts of the face. So if you have this coloring book and you want to follow along, I will be completing this page. I'm actually going to be doing the filming today for the face as well as the hair. And I've got a really cool color combination that I put together for the hair. So stay tuned for that one. But this one is going to be just the skin tutorial and then the hair tutorial will follow very shortly after that one. And then we will color in her clothing and then this one will be done. It will be all in a playlist and a full color along complete with tutorials on my channel that you can always go back to if you want to. You can also follow this tutorial and then just apply all of the same steps that we go through to the coloring page that you choose. If you check the description box down below, you'll find links down there for my Facebook group, my email list, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. I also now have membership on my channel. You can join the membership by clicking the little join button down there below the video. All of my videos now are going to be live premieres, so you will get special little badges as well as little emojis that you're able to use in chat, and I will be posting certain things that are just specific to members only in the members only community tab and sharing all of the videos that are to come before they go live. If you click the join button down below, you'll be able to see all of the extra perks and such that I added and I will be adding more in the future. So let's first go over the colors that I have here in my hand. I don't know if I'm going to use all these colors. I just picked up a few colors that I generally use for skin tones, but I have cream, which I love to use for highlights. I don't know yet if I'm going to use that or if I'm going to use the white. I'll decide here in a minute. I've got beige, light umber, peach, sienna brown, light peach, and rosy beige. And I don't know if I'm going to use the rosy beige yet or not. I don't know if it fits in quite well with the other colors that I've chosen, but we'll see where this goes. So I also do have my Holbein White, <laughs> and I want to actually start with the Holbein White. I want to be able to preserve some of the areas that I want highlighted. You may not be able to see it on camera because of course I'm using white on white paper. I wanna do this part because I want you to see that I am actually preserving those highlighted areas first before I do anything else. And I am doing the skin before I do the hair because she has all these little wispies hanging in her face. And so the skin definitely needed to be colored first because the colors that I have chosen for the hair, they are rather dark. And you want to make sure you do your skin first before you do the hair in that case because you don't want to pull those dark colors into your skin. You want your skin done and completed first before you move on to the hair. Okay, so for a side profile, the areas that I want highlighted are going to be right in here. And hopefully y'all can see that, but I can definitely see it. And then right here, a little bit under the eyebrow. And then on the nose, I like to have a highlighted area going right here on the front of the nose. And then down here, I want to highlight this area here. I want a little bit of a highlight in here. And then up here under the eye, I want a little bit of a highlight here as well. And I think I want a little bit just here above her lip. I'm gonna add some down in here. Now I am using the colored pencil paper by Strathmore, and this paper has a whole lot of tooth. Those are all the areas I want my highlight. And I know you can't see it probably on camera, but I could definitely see it. So now I'm gonna grab my light peach and I'm gonna start coming in all of the other areas and apply a first layer. And when I'm using my light peach, I do keep a pretty blunt tip because it doesn't need to be very sharp. I'm generally just going over the whole entire face 
with this color and I'm going to stay out of all of those areas that I highlighted and if you remember I had that highlight right here and so I want to stay out of this area and I am going over all of the other areas with this color because this is going to act as a first layer and I had some right down here above the lip so I'm going to put the peach all right here and I'm going to sort of just blend it into that white just a little I'm going to come up in here and make sure I cover all of this and I think I have, gosh, see now I can't see the white as well as I was seeing it before, but I'm gonna put this color all here. Anywhere where the hair is, I definitely want this color because all of those areas are going to be darker. And so this is just going to act as a first layer and then I'm gonna come back with my other colors. And above the eyebrow, I wanna keep it a little bit lighter. And I want that white there, but I sorta of wanna blend this light peach right into it. And I did have some highlighted areas all in here. So I'm gonna be really careful about where I lay this color. And then over here, I had some white as well. And I'm just gonna sorta of blend this color right into it. Of course, I'm gonna come back later with the white and I'm gonna go over it again so even if you go over the white it's really not that big of a deal this paper does have so much tooth that I could take that white whole bite and I can go right back over it again and then I'm gonna come down here and I'm just going to again apply a first layer and I'm gonna stay out of that area right there where I lay the soft white and some of these areas in this one are a little bit tricky I think this may be skin here and here and now I'm gonna come in with peach and I'm going to start applying a second layer and of course this is a little bit darker I'm only gonna lay this in and around all the hair and this is going to act as a second layer because all around where the hair is there is going to be a much greater shadow so those areas should definitely be darker and this is all going to get blended in really good later on I'll probably end up using a blender pencil to do that I usually try to use a blender pencil when I am doing a portrait and coloring in the skin. I'm gonna lay this color and I'm gonna make sure that I really get up under here, under her neck, and then right here where her clothes are meeting her neck as well. And you can see, again, I'm staying out of that area where I had the white and also where I had the peach right here where I want it a little bit lighter. And now I wanna come in here and I want to put a little bit more color here because I want to actually draw this in to make it look like there is a much deeper shadow here where the nose is and here where the nostril is I'm gonna make that darker down here under her lips I would assume this would be just a little bit darker I like to darken it up just a little bit around the bottom lip and then all in here where I really want that highlight to show up I'm gonna use this color and add just a second layer in there and all in here is where I wanted that to stay much more highlighted I like to add a little bit more color right above the eyebrow now I have the beige and I'm gonna use this just to add a third layer and go over some of these other colors and I'm sort of just blending the colors in. This is also adding just a little bit of a contrast between the colors. I'm using it to just sort of pull this peach into where the highlighted areas are. You, if you remember, I had that highlighted area here. I probably want a little bit of a highlight here. And then down here where I had the lips, I'm just gonna pull that into that white just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come down here and sort of blend some of these colors together as well. I really just like the contrast between this beige color and the peachy colors that have more of an orange tone in them. Now that we have the colors placed where we want them, I'm gonna go very, very lightly. This is light umber. And I'm gonna go very, very lightly and I'm going to go just in the areas where I want to intensify the shadows. So it's gonna be right here around the nose. It's going to be over the nostril. And then here where I created more definition on the nose, I'm just gonna go in a circular motion and make that a little bit more noticeable. And then I'm gonna come up in here, holding the pencil again at the side, because these hairs laying here are gonna create more of a shadow. This one's a little bit more complicated because we've got all of this skin in here and it's very difficult to tell what is skin and what is hair. <laughs> down here and towards the back of her neck. This is going to be much darker. And then right here where her face meets her neck. And 
I think I'm going to use the beige to blend those colors out. See how it just sort of blends all that color together? And the paper makes a huge difference as well. But right here where the nose is, I want to make sure that I get that blended out really, really good. And you can see I'm still keeping that white highlight right there just above her lip and we are going to come back and do the makeup as well let's go ahead and blend that color out here because if you don't blend these two colors together that light umber is going to look very very dark and you could still see i still have quite a lot of the tooth of the paper i think i need some of that light umber up in here because this should be much darker <laughs> come back again with this light umber and very lightly go back over the line that I made for the nose and I'm sort of spreading it out and then I'm going to come back and blend that out just a little bit more. Let me come back and do the same thing right here on the nostril. Anytime you use that darkest color you definitely want to come back and blend that color out. Okay so I'm going to come back with the light peach and you could see that I've got a pretty blunt tip and I'm gonna use this color to spread out and blend in all these other colors. I think we need to go ahead and start blending out some of these colors. I've got my Caran d'Ache Full Blender and I am just going to go over all of these colors I have laid down here and sort of blend them in. So I am jumping in here and doing a little bit of a voiceover because this is the part of the skin tutorial that I got to and I really started questioning what I was doing and I wasn't really liking the way that it was looking. And I know that we all sometimes feel like we make mistakes and we feel like we can't fix it and we're just going to stop coloring it, not put any more effort into it, just put it aside and give up. Well. I was not giving up <laughs> and you will see throughout the rest of the video that I go through a process where I try to fix it. It's funny because I was filming this and I was getting so frustrated behind the camera and you could hear my frustration and I'm just sitting here talking to myself just saying things like no this isn't right, oh my gosh, huffing and puffing. I just was ready to give up, but I didn't. Instead of just completely giving up, I decided to go ahead and color in her eyes, give her some makeup, fix what I did above her eyes where I added that color that was too dark, brighten up her lips, and just add some color to her and see if that changed the way that she looked. So before I start blending some of these colors in together, I'm gonna go ahead and color in her eye because I think it will really help me to see things a lot better, if that makes sense. Okay, so I have chartreuse, and I'm going to add a bit of a highlight in here. And then I have spring green, and I have dark green. I'm gonna have to grab a Posca and just give her a little bit of white in her eye. Oh my gosh, y'all, even just sitting here while I was filming and coloring in her eye, I was questioning myself so much, but you'll see how I go back in and I fix it. And then I need to draw some of this back in with my black. So now I'm trying to redraw in the entire eye and adding some Posca to give it a pop of white to hopefully make it look a little bit more realistic again. Then I come back and I decide I want her to have some darker eyeshadow and I didn't like the way that it turned out and you'll see me coming back and grabbing the eraser. I'm using the mono eraser and I'm trying to pull some of that color up and I just sort of go back and forth with adding things and taking them away and trying to make corrections to what I already thought was a failed project. Then I decide to go ahead and draw in her eyebrows. I used a couple different colors and sort of layered them just to give it a little bit of definition. I was hoping that adding this color to her face would make a difference for me and what I was feeling when I was visually looking at it myself. Then I grabbed my rosy base which I really wasn't sure if I was going to use this color but I started adding it and blending it into some of the other colors and I really liked the contrast that it was creating between some of the colors I had already used. In the earlier part
part of the video, I had added Sienna Brown up here above her eyes, and I really didn't like it, so I went in and erased it. And then I tried the Rosy Beige, and you can see that apparently I didn't like it again, so I came back with my mono eraser and I started erasing again. Then I came back and tried to reapply the Rosy Beige and try to add this color in different places on her face to see if it would make any difference at all. I even came back again with the eraser and decided I didn't like that. And then I decided I was going to grab my spring green and start applying eyeshadow. So I started with the spring green and added that towards the lower part of her eye. Then I came back with the chartreuse and I gave her a little bit of a highlighted area just under her brow and started blending some of that color in to add a little bit of contrast between the colors. Then I used the dark green to go all around her eye and add some of the color back into the coloring page and really define her eyes. I came back with the spring green and added a little bit of that under her eye. Then I came back and added a little bit more of the dark green just to darken it up and blended all of the colors together. After I was done using all of these colors, I did come back with my Holbein Soft White. I added a few highlights in just the places where I thought they would look good. After I did all of this, I really started to like the way that it was turning out. It sort of just started to bring it all together at this point. Then I decided to go ahead and color in her lips, and for this I'm using Terracotta and Crimson Red. After I had all the color laid down, I decided to come back with the soft white Holbein and add some highlights in her lips. I also used the mono eraser to pull up some of the red that I didn't think I wanted there. Okay, so I grabbed my blush pink and I think I'm gonna give her just a little bit of color in here. Okay, we're gonna come back with the light peach and we're gonna start trying to blend some of these colors out and I'm going to do that by going in a circular motion. Now I'm going to come back with my blender and I'm going to see, this is my Caran d'Ache blender, we're going to see if I could get it to look even smoother. This is smoothing it out quite a bit more. When you're coloring skin, you want to make sure it looks really, really smooth. And y'all, I was really unsure about this. I really, really was. I didn't like how it was turning out. And I thought I was going to be in trouble. <laughs> but I think that it's turning out okay. And I really love her green eyeshadow. Okay, so now let me grab my Holbein Soft White. Right here where it got messed up, I'm going to turn that into a highlighted area. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a lot of fixing here. Oh, I love that. Let's see if I could add the highlight back in right here. I've already blended out so much of this. I think it worked. And right here above the lip, I wanted to keep that highlight in there. And then down here, I like to keep a highlight. And then right in here. My gosh, y'all, after all that fixing, I was really worried about this one. I really was. I was afraid that I had messed up the entire portrait that I worked so hard on, but I think that it turned out okay. And that just goes to show you that anything is fixable. I just had to keep coming back with that eraser and going over things and fixing them. And I might come back a little bit more and try to fix some things, but I think most of the tooth of the paper is pretty much gone. I would have liked to accentuate this area right here where her nose is, but I had to pull a lot of that up and then blend it back out again. This paper, I think, really saved me. At first, I was a little bit like, uh, I don't know, but I think because this paper had so much tooth to it, it helped me to be able to come back and change things so many times. And you saw how many times I kept coming back and erasing and picking things up and putting things back. <laughs> Hopefully you were able to see, even if I had to speed parts of it up, where I made mistakes and then I had to come back and pull the color up or add color somewhere else or try to make sure it looked a little bit more blended or change my original plan. But it just goes to show you that when you go into something and you don't really have a plan for it, I had no idea that I was going to give her green eyeshadow. I really thought that I was gonna make her look a lot more natural 
and a little bit more just kind of plain Janey, but then coming back in and adding the green eyeshadow and making those highlights pop a little bit more, deciding to go with red for the lips, really helped another little light bulb to go off in my head because now I am thinking of somewhere else that I could go with this that I hadn't originally planned, and you'll have to stay tuned for the next video to see what I do. <laughs> But make sure you watch the hair tutorial because the hair tutorial is going to be a hair color like y'all have probably never seen before. I scoured the internet and I looked everywhere to see if anybody had done this natural hair color and nobody had done it. So I put some colors together and I tested them out and it came out so perfect and I absolutely love it and I'm hoping that I can redo the same thing while I tape myself doing it so that I could do a tutorial for y'all. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Everything that you've seen me use in this video will be in the description box below so you could easily find it. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.